44 sure was an experience for me. There is so much to talk about for this seventh album, and I don't even know where to start. The inspirations, the finer details, the rollout, and the response. It was only 40 minutes of music, but it's representative of nearly two whole years of my life. It's my shortest album by a huge margin, but it's also the longest I've worked on an album by a pretty long shot, too. Even Spiral didn't take a whole year to make. Maybe if you count tracks like Wet Match 6, which came from unfinished, loose demos I made from years past, but even then, that kind of feels like a stretch. The process of making Spiral didn't start in earnest until I made Electric Elector in May 2016, and the whole out double album was out the following January. And honestly, it could have been out, like, in October, if not for my waiting for DJ Dooms to finish up the semester at college. I usually work pretty fast. But I digress, the time between first coming up with the idea for 04 and it being ready for release was way longer. And there were no collaborators to wait on this time. This project, it basically took a year and a half. I took the picture that became the album cover on January 3rd, 2018, and the album dropped 20 months later in August 2019. That's a lot of time with almost no music. And I don't just mean I wasn't releasing new music, I wasn't really making much of it either. See, after Spiral I had a bit of a conundrum because I was so proud of that project, it felt like such a giant culmination of my work that I wasn't going to be topping anytime soon. Almost like a series finale to my music, even though I had no intention of stopping after that. And through much of 2017 I wasn't coming out totally fulfilled with what I was doing. I mean, in retrospect, the stuff I did that year I'm actually pretty happy with. I did come out with a lot of good stuff in 2017, but aside from my rescoring Orbitals the Altogether DVD, I wasn't really too happy with the material I was making at the time. Something wasn't clicking. And then as 2018 started, I figured it was time to give a shot at a seventh album, but what to actually do? All I knew is that it would have to be different. First of all, I have no plans of ever making a project as long as Spiral again. And one of the first decisions I made shortly after releasing it in its almost two hour glory was that the next project had to be short and sweet. But I also wanted to redefine myself in the same way that many of my favorite artists are capable of doing. Throw a left hook, get out of my comfort zone. And, you know, there's nothing that would make me feel more uncomfortable than putting my own voice in my music and writing lyrics. I'd been inspired by several artists in my social circles, like Patricia Taxon and Fully Involved and Rainier. Seeing them make projects like this that were still really good in spite of not being all that great singers put the idea in my head that, hey, maybe I can pull this off too. But turns out the addition of lyrics to this album is the sole reason this project took so damn long. Not my vocals themselves, just the writing. Writing lyrics is just so contrary to how my brain works and processes music. Just having to come up with, you know, poetry that consistently rhymed and flowed decently well, and also told a story in some way, that took some energy out of me that I don't think I'll ever be able to channel in the same way again. <laughs> well, it's mainly the part where it all had to rhyme that I think tripped me up the most, because I never do that kind of stuff in any other context. I could have theoretically done, like, spoken word pieces about my self-doubt, and that could would have gone much more smoothly, but nobody likes spoken word in this kind of music. That would have been lame. I could have just thrown together some words about how love is the answer and whatever other generic EDM lyric cliches would come to mind, but I also knew this would be a main album, and as such I was afraid of half-assing it. I wanted these lyrics to mean something to me, to feel like they represented the kind of person that I was. But as I tried to come up with things to write about, all that was coming to me was, oh, I suck at this, I suck at this, I suck at life. And so the album became about how I suck at life. <laughs> like, you know, in school where you're given a writing prompt and told to write about whatever you want, and then you can't think of something, so you write about how you don't know what to write about. <laughs> That's kind of how my brain works. And thus, Autopilot was born. How I felt like I was wasting my family's time staying up in my room just pumping out YouTube videos and not getting one of those fabled real jobs that gets you enough uh, income to let you move out of your parents' house. I mean, I do have a part-time job outside of YouTube to support myself, but yeah, um, still stuck in this room. And so I wrote a song talking to myself about my own bullshit and why don't I get my ass moving? What excuse do I have? Why am I wasting my time trying to express these thoughts in rhyme? 
Jesus, this got depressing. But yeah, that was autopilot. I put that track together in April 2018. I had some ideas on where else I wanted the album to go, but pretty vague ideas at that and not enough to really know how I was going to continue. I did figure out how to put my own vocals in, though, and I decided I should use vocoder. I mean, it's no secret that I cannot sing. I do not have the vocal abilities to consistently hit notes. There are wide ranges of notes that my vocal cords just fail on me if I even try. If anyone has ever heard me imitate songs in reviews, they know what I'm talking about. I mean, I mainly just do it because I think it's funny, and not because I think it would work in an actual serious musical context. I could theoretically apply autotune, but fucking everyone uses autotune. That'd be even more lame than spoken word. I don't want to sound like... I don't know, Lil Uzi Vert or something. <laughs> Given the genre I operate in, going the more Daft Punk and Crosswork route seemed to fit much better and would be much easier for me to actually listen back to. Well, I think I actually had in mind Herbie Hancock's Sunlight album. I always really liked his use of the vocoder on that album and the way it went up against his 70s funk stuff. Like, there was still a definite soul behind that filter. Herbie Hancock can't really sing or write compelling lyrics, and that didn't make his music any less brilliant than w even when there was singing in it. Maybe I kind of tried to take after him. But that first version, I just used the internal mic on my laptop, and it sounded like crap, so I decided I should probably get a mic before I try to get this album on its feet. Though maybe not right now, I should work on getting my vision for the album together first, so that's kind of what I did. By that I mean I sorta had some vague ideas for other tracks and slowly formed some lyrics together and procrastinated on everything for ages. <laughs> the only other music I made in 2018 was digitized replicas, just remaking a bunch of my favorite old tracks in FL Studio so that my skills didn't totally atrophy. And I also made Top of the Comps, which was a repackaging of my compilation material over the years that I threw together in like a day. And I re-remastered Marble Jar, and I started these commentary videos. So it was on my mind, but I don't know, I wasn't really working on it. At this point, I can't even be bothered with a timeline, but some interesting things did happen. For one thing, uh, 2018 was also the year that I graduated from college. I completed my bachelor's degree in film editing, or uh, cinema art and science, as I believe my major at Columbia was declared. And then I just kind of skated by the rest of the year, not really doing much of anything and wondering whether this was all worth it, knowing that I was going to be paying off a $20,000 debt for the next several years for a slightly increased chance at a job in some fields, maybe. It was something I was thinking about even before I graduated, and some of these thoughts turned into the lyrics of Expand. And by the end of 2018, I was feeling particularly unfulfilled with everything and had no energy to do anything besides the wonky angle. I kind of got in that... I had kind of gotten in that stupid rhythm that ADD people like me are cursed with sometimes where you, you've pressured yourself to work on one thing and you can't work on other things because you feel like they'll distract you, but you can't work on the thing you're trying to focus on either because ADD, so you just kind of read Twitter all day. I mean, having ADD means either you can't focus on anything at all or you hyper-focus on one thing and can't think about anything else. There's no in-between and you have zero control of when the latter happens. Just ideas will randomly spark and then they'd kick off like that. Hence lines in Never End, like, my brain has no ignition, it just goes when it sees fit. And it's worth noting that throughout this time, I was driving this used Ford Taurus to and from work, or the L station my college classes in downtown Chicago, and yes, it's the car that the odometer from the cover is from. That car went through a lot. Uh, I think at one point, I kicked the side of it because I was mad at my little brothers for something really stupid like, I don't know, screwing up a pizza. <laughs> I don't remember. But I dented the car like that, and I was like, holy crap, I'm one, like one of the least physically strong people in the world. How did I dent a car with my foot? There was another time where I was pulling the car out of an underground parking lot, and I came too close to the corner of the wall, and I heard this huge scraping noise. <laughs> And now, oh, now we got some more dents and these big white streaks all over them. That's fun. But this car also could not handle the winter well. Like, if you left the engine on without moving the car in the cold, the engine would shut off by itself and you couldn't turn it back on unless you waited like five minutes or something. And in the winter of 2018, I did not know that the car needed antifreeze. <laughs> and uh, the car just started to develop a habit of overheating the engine very quickly. I did eventually ask a repair guy about it while taking it in for an oil change, 
and I was told, oh Jesus, why is this car even on the road? This is not safe, you should not be driving this anymore. And given this was right after several of the least productive months in my life, it had me thinking, this is kind of a metaphor for my life right now, isn't it? This car's old, but it was in perfectly good shape when our family got to it. It'd just been building up all these problems that I've really only got myself to blame for, and I just sat there and let those problems ruin the car to the point of its being nearly undrivable, and now it's just been sent off to a scrap dealer. Procrastination does have consequences, and I thought to myself, Oh, someday something like this might happen for your own life, too. You can't stay in your parents' house forever, remember? I mean, in case you couldn't already tell, this was, of course, the inspiration for the lyrics of Drive. Everything described in that track is stuff that actually happened to me. Besides the mechanic recommending public transportation, I just included that as a bit of embellishment since I thought it was funny and it cemented how much I felt like I screwed myself with this. The whole debacle just felt like a perfect summation of all my inner anxieties right there and how much of a shit I felt like. Even though it took quite a while to figure out how to get the, you know, the story to rhyme and flow and stuff, and I just knew it was something that had to be in this album. Also felt fitting since I had that picture of the odometer that was from said Ford Taurus, and I was planning on using it for the album cover. So I knew well what the album was going to be about and how it was going to play out and form an arc. I had autopilot about myself down procrastinating, you know, be the mission statement for the album. I had expand about getting stuck after graduating college, having been used to the routines of school life and now being out of it and feeling directionless, out of the loop as it were. I had night walk, using my own physical weakness as a metaphor for feeling lost and stuck in life and applying it to some story about walking through the city because, of course. <laughs> physically not having the energy to get where I needed to go in time. As I said, I had drive where I remembered how sitting around will eventually have real life consequences. And then miles per hour ignition, about a lot of the same things as the other tracks here, but I guess I had internalized my dad's constant quoting of the Tom Cochran song, Life is a Highway and apply that metaphor to my own life situation, having sort of decided a path in life with my film degree but not knowing where to go from there, and knowing wallowing wasn't gonna help despite still kinda doing it. <laughs> but that leads directly into one big long instrumental centerpiece in miles per hour, as a symbol of me finally getting past my self-doubt enough to actually get something done. It's the biggest and most sprawling track, the one with the most momentum, the one that most relied on the kinda loop-based methods of my previous work, the one that I was most in my element while I was making it. I figured it was also something that should be here just in case people get really turned off by the new direction this album was taking and would have something to latch on to that felt like the kind of thing I was better known for. No foreshadowing there at all. <laughs> and then finally Never End as a sum up of how all these self-doubting thoughts were just gonna keep coming back to haunt me and how I felt like this was all forming a big cycle. This was far from the first time I'd felt stuck like this and it wouldn't be the last but I still need to keep going and try to maintain some positivity in spite of it all, try and end on an optimistic note, and of course segue the last track into autopilot so that the whole album can form a seamless loop and add that extra layer. Mark from Spectrum Pulse compared the experience I was describing to grinding on the YouTube content mill, which I didn't actually have in mind when I wrote it, uh, cause YouTube has actually been a more consistent source of personal fulfillment than anything else in my life right now. I do it mainly because I enjoy doing it, and the little revenue I get I see more as a bonus. Same with my actual music making, I'd still be doing this stuff even if I never saw a single cent for it. Not that I see much for my music to begin with. But I can see how his interpretation would apply to someone who depends on YouTube as their main source of income. I imagine that would get dehumanizing real quick. Oh yeah, and I added Refill as an intro to Never End because 8 tracks looks more like a real album to me than 7, and I always feel the need to have more ambient-centric breather moments in between the biggest and most intense part of an album. Those moments are easier to appreciate if you space them out a little bit. Very simplistic tune, that one. Maybe a little Tangerine Dream inspired or something? I don't know. It doesn't really sound that much like Tangerine Dream, but whatever. So. As for writing the actual music, all of these tracks kind of played out differently. Expand, for instance, I started a demo in Acid that kind of tried to directly continue off of the grooves of Autopilot, but then just sounded bad and I scrapped. It sounded kind of like this. But 
there were a section of loops that sounded like they could be good if I redid them in FL Studio, which I, I did, and I kind of made up the track from there, sort of using the random hooks I had written down as a guide. Nightwalk and Drive, though, I had the lead melodies first and wrote the lyrics around them. I would just wake up one morning with a melody stuck in my head, knew it wasn't from any other song I knew, and quickly input it into FL Studio so that I wouldn't forget it. And they turned into those songs. Similar deal with Never End. That main riff that makes the hook and the don't know if this journey bridge near the end, those were melodies that I, I basically just dreamt up. I also decided to focus the album around old school Deep House styles, mainly because I was feeling inspired by Calvin Harris's One Kiss and Mr. Finger's Cerebral Hemispheres and other stuff like that but also because it was a way for me to work in these MIDI sounding pianos and stuff and get it to have some kind of retro charm that sounded good to me. A way for me to lean into the production weaknesses I had in FL Studio without, you know, looking bad. It's dated, yeah, but on purpose, because I've always loved the way this style sounds. And I should mention that O4 is also the album of mine that least relies on loops. Autopilot and Miles Per Hour and, Ign and Miles Per Hour Ignition, they were made out of loops, and the first few seconds of Expand was based on a pattern of loops in a scrap demo, like I said, but everything else came from my own head. Not gonna lie, that is one element of this project that I'm genuinely proud of. Miles Per Hour may be the longest track on here, but surprisingly it's the one that took the least amount of time to make, since it was an instrumental and I was making it the traditional way. I, I cranked that whole thing out in one day. I think I also cranked out Refill in a day too, but whatever. The track that took the longest to make though, that was Never End. I was trying to write the instrumental first, but wasn't sure if I had enough space to fit the stuff I wanted to say and didn't know how I was gonna say it. And eventually it came together more easily when I actually had the lyrics done and stuff. Kept adding more and more to it. The last thing I added was that piano solo near the end, pretty heavily inspired by the those on BT's first two albums, I'm an ESCM. But it did all finally come together, and then the last step came. Actually recording my voice and integrating the vocoders in the mix. I got my microphone here in May 2019, recorded a few reviews with it so that I could get the hang of it, and then I started recording the lyrics themselves. I also did run through a lot of different presets in FL Studio, trying to find the right balance of the vocoder effect sounding cool, but also allowing my voice to actually be intelligible, and trying to master the instrumental so that they had room to fit my voice in them too, and things did get complicated, but I did finally reach the point at which I could submit the whole damn thing into DistroKid, and I finally released it to the world on August 17th, 2019. Same date as inside the mainframe, because why not? And the response was... mixed. <laughs> I mean, I've talked in previous album commentaries about not getting much feedback for my albums because I'm an obscure Bandcamp artist whose only ex exposure really is plugging my stuff on my other channels. But when I released O4, my audience on the wonky angle was much bigger than it was when I released Spiral. A lot more people were paying attention now. Point is, I very much got the honest feedback that I was hoping for, and as you might guess, not all of it was positive. <laughs> I mean, some people did really like it and thought it was my best album yet, but there were also plenty of people who absolutely did not agree. When I announced O4, I predicted that people probably weren't going to score it any lower than like a 4 out of 10, but you know, almost as if to spite me, I saw several people on Rachel Music who scored it a 3 out of 10. Some people really did not like this project. <laughs> I even got to see someone say my music has always been terrible since day one, and this was just another particularly bad example. Which, um, yikes. But I think more people were just kind of ambivalent on it. Most people didn't hate it. I got to see a lot of criticisms. Like, the most negative ones mostly just said the inclusion of my own vocals was what killed it for them. I just sounded like crap on it. The vocoders were a big turnoff for some people, and, you know, I still think I sound good. I felt it felt like a huge step to have my own voice in my music and for it to be listenable at all. For instance, I think I sound more intelligible here than, in, say, Square Pusher did in his Trouble Leader 1 project. High bar, I know. Though, for some people, the vocoders really did work in the way that I intended, which, you know, it's good. Just, you know, not everyone was gonna agree on that point. There were also people who said that this project was too derivative, and highlighted two particular on-the-nose homages I made to other artists. There was my Carl Hyde impression in the middle of Expand. 
I did, I blatantly had Underworld's Born Slippy and Pearl's Girl in mind when I did that. I thought it was fun to put his style of, you know, talk singing in over this more house instrumental. I was inspired by him since, again, he's not a good singer, but he uses his lack of ability to his advantage. Underworld would not be the same with an actual good singer on top. I was like, I can do that toxing stuff too and have fun with it in the same way, but I'll keep it relegated to like a few seconds so that it doesn't cut into the song and doesn't feel like a wholesale ripoff. Though I did also kind of forget that Underworld themselves did like a piano house instrumental uh, like this on Push Up Stairs. Someone pointed that out and I was like, crap, you're right. Oh well. That was still fun to do. The other homage that bugged people was on Never End when I sampled Orbital's Time Becomes. People were like, oh, of fucking course this guy sampled his favorite band. He's just trying to be a shallow ripoff of them. Again, I just meant it as a fun reference that also added to the track's lyrics about being stuck in a loop. You know, some extra subtext there that wasn't in the original, and I, you know, I don't think anything on this album itself really sounds much like Orbital to begin with. Also, I cut off the sample before the word loop was said because I figured I was giving it to a crowd who would pretty easily be able to pick up on what I was doing there. It was really on the fucking nose, though, I will freely admit that. As was the Phoenix Wright reference I made on that track. Some people were like, eh, I don't know on that line. I still don't regret any of these moves, though. I figure no one else but me is gonna include direct references to Underworld, Orbital, and Phoenix Wright all in the same album. But I'll tell you one thing that was highlighted as a weakness for this project that I don't really have a defense for. It was, it was something that uh, Mark from Spectrum Pulse highlighted when I sent the project into him on, for his On the Pulse segment, and other people pointed out before that, but it's that the project isn't as well textured as my previous ones. All the instrumentals are a lot more plain than my previous stuff. And this is probably the big downside to my attempted transition away from loops. My FL Studio stuff felt a lot thinner to people, and, like, I didn't have the skills to accomplish the same kind of layered grooves that I could much more easily accomplish while putting together loops in Acid. And this is cemented by the fact that pretty much unanimously everyone's favorite track on the album was Miles Per Hour. It was the one that sounded the most interesting to them, the one that had the most momentum and texture. It is probably the track on there that's the most fun for me to listen to as well. And while any vibraphone solos and faux orchestral outros and deep house grooves on other tracks are still lots of fun for me and a way for them to feel like they had more texture in comparison with my previous stuff, yeah, it's, it's still pretty simplistic. And yeah, I suppose that leads me to how I view O4 overall and how it fits into my overall catalog. One thing I will have to say is that no, I don't think it's the best work I've ever done. And honestly, I never really even did, even while I was promoting it. I was saying things like, well, I can't really compare it to my other stuff yet because it, it's it's so different and it's still new. I don't have distance from it. But I also definitely wasn't feeling as hyped for this as I was when Spiral dropped. I do think the project is good. I am still proud of it and I wouldn't change anything about it. I don't think it's better than Spiral, Inside the Mainframe, or Marble Jar, but I do think it's better than Bubble Machine, If Tomorrow Is A Ball, and Dark Clouds. It's the album of mine that feels like it has the most purpose behind it. Like, every little detail in this project meant something to me and worked towards the greater whole. Even if there were fewer details to begin with. I also think it's my most cohesive project. Keeping it at 40 minutes means it didn't linger on anything more than necessary and got in and out quickly. Something none of my other albums really do. <laughs> I do tend to view the even-numbered tracks more highly as well. Like, I like the grooves and propulsion of Expand and Miles Per Hour. I like the detail and general doofiness of Drive. I like how satisfying a closer Never End worked as, and how it's the most well-textured FL Studio track I've come up with so far. But I also think Autopilot is kind of a slow start, Nightwalk is kind of boring and feels like a pacing device and Miles Per Hour Ignition and Refill are just interludes. <laughs> also, this album's second half is much stronger than his first half in general. But yeah, more than anything, O4 was just a learning experience for me. It's an album that I designed to put myself out of my element, which it did accomplish, and was the kind of thing that I knew from when I first came up with the idea that I was likely going to be looking back on with mixed feelings. I thought, if nothing else, this is gonna make my back catalog more interesting and more dimensional, because it's no fun if an artist just makes the same album over and over again. 
And I also knew, even before the mixed reviews for the project came in, that this was likely an experiment that I was not going to be repeating. I'm not completely against the idea of using my vocals and my music again someday, but it's probably not going to be very often, and I'm definitely never going to be writing an entire album around it again. Writing lyrics that were meaningful to me and that I was not embarrassed by took a ridiculous amount of energy, and, uh, and it was not as fun as when I was just doing instrumental stuff. Despite expounding more energy on this project than usual, it turned out I may have overthought it. Serving an album specifically centered around my lyrics and less around the instrumentals to an audience who, like me, tend not to pay attention to lyrics and music as much and are used to instrumental stuff. I mean, I didn't not think of that. That's why the Bandcamp version of the album has the instrumental mix attached. But, you know, it just goes to show. More effort does, unfortunately, not necessarily mean more reward. I'm hoping for album 8 I can just loosen up a little more, have more fun with it, try to make it weirder and more instrumentally interesting, who knows. Getting back in the rhythm of loop-based stuff was kinda weird since this album took so long and I felt a little out of practice. I made the Unorctician Trilogy of Error sessions to help me get back on track like I used to, and the process is slowly starting to come back to me. That's promising. But, you know, 04... I don't think I'm ever going to fully love this album, but I'm glad I put forward all the effort and I think it is representative of the kind of person that I am like I wanted it to be. I feel like through this album I learned a lot about myself and my creative process, and if it came off embarrassing, it's in such a way that I feel like I can live with and had mentally prepared myself for. I have no regrets in the way that I went about this album. I think it's still a pretty good project that I'm still proud of and can listen back to without cringing. And I hope the experience can get me to bigger and better things from here on. Mm -hmm.